Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. That's honor. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Let me talk about something that bothers almost all of us. Diba, pinag-uusapan natin kayo with Brother Yo. We have the, the backstory. The Pope was installed by God Himself. Idea ni Lord yan. Eh di ba meron ding mga bad Popes? Right? May mga bad Popes. Didn't we have bad Popes? Yes? Yeah, if Peter was the first Pope, si Pope Francis, na medyo tang twister yung pangaran niya, kasi Pope Francis, minsan naging yung Pope Francis, nagkakabalik dati. Si Pope Francis is pang 266. Ganun na po katagal. In history, there are, there have been a few atrocious popes. The scandals rocking the Catholic Church ngayon, wala yan. Kumbaga, hindi yan ngayon lang. It's not only today. Look, the Catholic Church is what? 2,000 plus years old. And we've gone through a lot of scandals. May mga pope na honorable. Marami yan. Marami mga popes na honorable. But, there were few who were horrible. Talagang nakakatakot. Let me name a few. Pope Alexander VI. Naging pope siya noong 1492 to 1503. You know what he did during his time? He bribed cardinals to elect him as pope. Corrupt pala, no? He also killed off some or other cardinals na nag oppose sa kanya. He also had many affairs. Marami rin siyang anak. Ooh, shocking. <laughs> Next, Pope Urban VI, 1378 to 1389. He did the same thing. He tortured and killed six cardinals who were going against him. Wow, shocking. <laughs> Next, Pope Benedict IX, 1032 to 1048. He sold his papacy. Binenta niya. But eventually he regained it back. Now I could go on and on and on. Perhaps you're asking, but may mga bad na popes. Why did God allow bad popes? Alam niyo bakit? I'll give you a very biblical answer. Tanong niyo ako, bakit? Buhin natin, bakit bro niyo? Why did God allow bad popes? My answer, I don't know. Because that question is the same as asking, why did God allow pedophile priests? Or, since tinatanong mo na yan, might as well ask, why did God allow starvation as well? Or war? Or genocide? Bakit niya binuha yung mga germs? Bakit niya binuha yung cockroaches and yung dinosaurs? Ang mga ipis at dinosaur na nabuhay noon pa, Na namatay na yung mga dinosaur, bakit buhay pa rin yung mga ipis hanggang ngayon? So these are age-old questions that I'm sorry to tell you, we cannot fully answer this side of heaven. Hindi natin masasagot dito yan. We can only group for incomplete answers. And let me give you four incomplete answers why God allows bad popes. Are you ready? Yes? Yes. First, 
because he's sending us a message. Message number one is, he wanted to tell us that everyone needs a Savior. Everyone needs a Savior. From the very beginning, God never promised that our popes will be perfect. And it's no accident that God chose Peter. If you know the history, see Peter, he's stumbling, fumbling, dami niyang sablay sa buhay, medyo matapang siya, naduwag, di ba? And yung reading kanina ni Brother Yo, he was, he was, he was, Jesus installed Peter as the rock. But immediately after, if, if, if you look five verses after, tinawag siya ni Jesus na Satan. Here, here is Jesus telling Peter, you are the rock and on this rock I will build my church. Five verses after, sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, Satan. Wala nang honeymoon stage. Natawag ka agad siya Satan. Here's how it happened. When Jesus was talking about his passion, sabi niya, mamamatay ako, I'm going to leave you. Tayo ang Pedro. Never. I won't let that happen. Yabang niya eh. Tapang niya eh. Atapang nga tao si Pedro eh. And Jesus told him, Jesus rebuked him. Sabi ni Jesus, get behind me, Satan. You see, akala mo nung time na yun, yung mga gospel writers, but ganun, parang may galit sila kay Pedro. Hindi man lang nila pinakage ng maganda. Hindi ba sila marunong ng PR? Di ba? They didn't package him to look good. In fact, they talked about Peter's weaknesses again and again and again. Ang daming sablay ni, ni Pedro na, na, na pinapakita sila. They exposed his humanity. Yung weaknesses niya, yung flaws niya, yung, 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 yung violence niya, his cowardice, yung pagiging duwag niya, yung temper niya. These are no grudge. Hindi siya sinisiraan. They simply, the gospel writer, simply wanted to tell everyone that he was someone that needed a savior, savior like everyone else. He was the first pope, and even the pope needs Jesus. Even the pope needs Jesus. When, when, when soldiers arrested Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, on impulse, anong ginawa ni Peter? He drew out his sword. Tinaga niya yung ear ni Malchus. Malchus is one of the servants of the high priest. Bakit kaya si Malchus? Okay. Imagine niyo, ba't kaya nakita niya padating huli si Jesus, kinuha niya yung sword niya, tinaga niya si Malchus na gano'n, tanggal yung tenga. Ba't si Malchus? Malchus is a servant. Bakit hindi yung sundalo? You know why? Ako man yun, kung ako yun nandun, hindi ko tatanggain yung sundalo. Kasi yung sundalo may espada. <laughs> yung servant wala. So, siyempre, magmamatapang ako, doon ako sa sigurado. Eh, kung tatagain ko yung sundalo, nasa lag, nawasiwas ako, eh, patay ako. <laughs> Kasi ganun nga si, si Peter, eh. On impulse, may yabang, ika nga. So, between attacking the soldier and the servant, pinili niya yung servant. Mas sigurado, mas sure ball. And a few hours after that, mas nag-dive down pa si Peter to the lowest level. Nung nahuli na si Jesus, nag-uusyoso siya, di ba? Tapos, nakita siya ng isang maiden, isang mga tao doon. Sabi niya, di ba ikaw si Pedro, kasama ka ni Jesus na taga Nazaret? Sabi niya, hindi, hindi ko kilala yan. <laughs> Sumagot yung manok. <laughs> Tapos next time, meron pa isa. Sabi niya, kasama ka ni Jesus, the, 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 the Nazarene. Sabi, no, I do not know the person. And then the third time, you're with Jesus, the Nazareans. Sabi niya, no, I do not know the person. Eh, yung manok na yung sumagot. Tak pala, oh. Ay, hindi pala. English. <laughs> now, Bible scholars, Bible scholars, listen to this, believe that Peter and Judas committed the same sin. And that sin is betrayal. They both betrayed Jesus. And this sin has the same weight. They have the same degree of gravity. 
You know the only difference between Judas and Peter? Judas, after niya ipagkanulo si Jesus, he ran away. Hindi na siya nakabangon. He hanged himself. On the other hand, Peter ran towards God. Bumalik siya kay Lord. Pinatawad siya. Now, this is God's scandalous love. Nadapa si Pedro, pero nakabangon siya dahil sa pagmamahal at sa pagpapatawad ng Diyos. Peter, Peter fell, but he was lifted up again. Now, many times, I personally, many times I have fallen. Hindi po kami perpekto. Baka akala nyo nandito kami sa feast. Mga santo kami. Hindi po. Kung malalaman nyo lang, magkakasama lang tayo. Andito yung misis ko. Yung nakatingin sa akin. Hindi ako pwede magsinungal eh. Misis ko yun eh. <laughs> Pag nasa sasakyan kami, siya yung stress. Kasi para ako si Peter. Pag may kakat siya yung ganyan, bubunga nga ako. Kasabihin ng misis ko, buksan mo kaya yung bintana. Eh ba't ko bubuksan? Maririnig. Pag narinig niya, mapapaaway ako. ba? Diba? So matapang ako pag walang naka, <laughs> nakakarinig. We have fallen. I personally have fallen many times. Kaninang first session, misis ko lang po yun nandito. Ngayon po, pati nanay ko, nakaupo. <laughs> Andun po yung nanay ko. Alam din po niya yung mga kasablay ko sa buhay. Ma, wag ka nang tumayo. <laughs> Para hindi ka nila makita. <laughs> I have fallen. But every time I would fall, I'd run toward my father. And all the time, this I believe in, this is how I feel, this is how I see him. Every time I would fall and I would run to him, I would not just find him waiting for me. No, I would find him running towards me. Mas mabilis pa ngayon, takbo niya papunta sa akin. Ako medyo nangihiya pa ako. He's not just waiting, he's running towards me. And he wanted to lift me up again. Now I have one question for you. Ito, seryoso to. Have you fallen? Have you fallen? Nadapa ka na ba? Yes. I invite you. Run towards God. Run towards God. And you'll find that He's not just waiting for you. You'll see him running towards you. Tumatakbo siya. Papunta sa iyo. Why? Because he loved you first. Ah, taas niyo ulit yung isang kamay niyo. Yung kanang kamay, taas ulit. May pangalan na yung katabi niyo, di ba? <laughs> Sabihin mo sa kanya, sa pangalan niya. First name. <laughs> Wag naman first name. <laughs> Sabi, Sabihin niyo first name. Sabi na doon. Hoy, first name. Hindi po. Yung pangalan talaga niya. Sabi mo sa kanya, Pre, Beshi. <laughs> Run towards God. Run towards God. Taas siya naman yung kaliwang kamay niyo. Sa kabila naman, sabihin mo sa kanya, Pre, Beshi. <laughs> Sabay tayo. <laughs> Alright. I believe, I believe God chose a broken, wounded, sinful man to become our first Pope because of this second message. Because God wanted to tell us that everyone is welcome. Everyone's welcome. If our leader is fallen, God proclaims to the whole world that His church welcomes everyone. Lahat po, welcome. In fact, I love the fact that Peter became the first Pope and not John. Tanong niyo ako bakit? Kasi si John, mas mukhang holy. Di ba? Lahat ng dinedepict na picture ni St. John, mas mukha siyang banal kesa kay Pedro. Si Pedro medyo barumbado ang dating. John is holier than Peter. I believe God chose Peter so that we all can identify with His scars. Para lahat tayo, alam natin, teka lang, kapareho namin si Pedro eh. 
madumi, maraming sablay, eh ganun din ako eh. So nakaka-relate tayo. In fact, here at, the, here at the feast, we invite you, since we understand that all of us are, 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 are broken, all of us need someone, here at the feast, we invite you to journey with us. We invite you, let's journey together. Who are couples here? Mga mag-asawa po, taas sa kamay. I'm part of the couples ministry. We have an LG na pang couple. I also would like to invite you. We have this um, upcoming event retreat. Pakishow, yung Lux retreat. I think this is batch 16. And it's happening on this September. Ayan. So, 4,500 per couple. Yun yung investment fee dyan. This is on September 28 and 29 sa Angels Hills Retreat Center in Tagaytay. So, if you wanted to join, I invite you. We've, me and my wife were part of Lux 4. Lux 4 pa. Ito 16 na. And with this, talagang narekindle. Alam niyo yung para kaming, ilang years na nga ba tayo mag-asawa, mami? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Kalimutan ko eh. 19 years. 2019 nga pala ngayon. 19 years na po kaming kasal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> a happy wife is a happy life. <laughs> so 19 years na kami magkasawa, pero alam mo pag magkasawa kami, para lang, para lang patay na patay siya sa akin. Yung mga ganun. Kasi nga naman, eh. Kwapo. Malit na bagay. So... <laughs> Kung gusto nyo, yung mga husbands, taas ang kamay. Kung gusto nyo patay na patay sa nyo, misis nyo hanggang ngayon, attend kayo nito. Maganda, magandang, seriously, magandang um, event or magandang retreat for couples. And also, yung mga men, ulit, taas ang kamay. Men, single men, adult men, or yung mga married men. Ito, this is past due already because we've announced this, I think, June or July pa. Um, we wanted to push through with our men of the house. It's an LG of men. Because yung, yung, yung mga, mga girls, mga wives natin, di ba, meron silang wow. Sabi namin, we have to do something with the men. Because if you invite the men of the house, dala natin yung buong family. So we'd like to invite you. We're starting the moth or men of the house. Um, it'll be every Saturday dito sa McDonald's in front of SM at 8 a.m. So, if you wanted to register, may registration kami sa labas. I'll be the one handling it. Usap tayo doon, kapi-kapi tayo. Anyway, tama na yung commercial. <laughs> Back to our regular programming. You know, history will tell us that all 266 popes were sinners. Lahat sila makasalanan. I love, you know, when, when Pope Francis was installed as Pope sa St. Peter's Square, alam niya sinabi niya, the first thing that he said, sabi niya, I am a sinner. Ganda, no? I think he's the first Pope na narinig ko yun. I am a sinner. And where, wherever he goes, whenever he talks to people, either to one person or to thousands of people, he will always ask, please pray for me. Now, this is what God wanted to tell us. Well, everyone is equal. That's message number three. Everyone is equal. The church is human. The popes are human. Taoyan. The priests are human. I am human. Kalata naman, ba? And in case hindi niyo napapansin, when you look in front of the mirror, meron ding nakatingin sa iyo na ang guapot ang ganda, di ba? He's also human. Kayo yun. You're also human, right? We are all human. Now, I thank God that he didn't, he didn't give the church the capacity to be perfect. Buti na lang. Why? Or else, pride would have destroyed us permanently. Ito na. Can I shock you? Brother James, kung nanonood ka, may power na rin kami nasabihin to at sumasagot sila. Ulit na rin, for Brother James. Can I shock you? Alright. <laughs> well, here's a shocking statement. 
Here in our church, the good coexist with the bad. Ulit natin. Here in our church, the good coexist with the bad. This is the reality of the church. The good coexists with the bad. We have to learn to thrive together or else we will not survive. That's a shocking truth. The, the, the wheat grows with the weeds. Hindi pwede yung mindset na bahala na kayo, basta kami banal. May mindset tayo minsan ganun eh. We'll have to learn to coexist. In fact, Pope Francis spoke about this in Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel. Sabi niya, the sower, when he sees weeds surrounding or sprouting among the, the grain, he does not grumble or overreact. Aray ko, may tinamaan, sapul ako. That's our problem, we overreact, yes? Diba? We overreact. Yes? Can I give you a tip? Pag may nakita kayo, normally, when we see the sin of someone, may nakikita tayo, sumasabla yun, sumasabla yun, sumasabla yun. Can I give you a tip? Yeah? Ito yung tip ko. Kalma lang, te. Inom kayo ng tsaa pa minsan-minsan para makalma kayo. Pag tayo mag-overreact, when we see the sin of others or someone in the church, what we do is we exaggerate their faults. And therefore, we forget our own sin. One classic example. We think that sexual sins are, are the worst kind. They're an abomination to God. So we condemn homosexual acts, premarital sex, all those associated with sexual sins. Kasi ang tingin natin, ang tindi ng kasalanan na yan. But what about acting in selfishness? Selfishness is a sin too. Grave din ang weight ng selfishness. When was the last time that you were not selfish? When was the last time that you were selfish? Yung sarili mo lang inisip mo. Ako, siguro, a few minutes ago, yeah, but that's, that's, that's reality. Tao tayo eh. Nadadapa tayo. And all these three points are here. Everyone needs a savior. Everyone is welcome. Everyone, um, everyone is equal. All these three points are here. They are important because God wanted to lead us to the most important message of all. They are there so that Everyone can focus on Jesus. Everyone focuses on Jesus. Here's the truth. Every human organization will always be broken, including the church. Why? So that we remain desperate for Jesus. He's the only one who can uplift your low self-worth. He's the only one who can, who can fill your emptiness. He's the only one who can heal your brokenness. Our own sinfulness and the sinfulness of the church compels us to keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on Jesus, not on any human being, not on any human institution, but on Jesus alone. Now turn to your friend. Sabi mo, sabi mo sa kanya, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You want another example of God's scandalous love? You don't have to look far. In fact, you're looking at it right now. Here I am standing in front of you. I am a huge sinner. Kung alam nyo lang. Kaya nga sabi ko, nandun yung asawa ko. Kanina, nandito yung anak ko. Andito yung nanay ko. Hindi ako makakailan. Mga bigla akong paluin. Joke. <laughs> I'm a huge sinner. Bigger than you can ever imagine. Yet here I am. Being used by God to be His messenger. 
diba? That's just how it works. Eh. I think yun yung modus operandi ni Lord. Kasi tingin mo ito yung worth mo, ah, eh. kapag kinalabit ka niyan, handa ka na. <laughs> May papagawa siya sa yung matindi. Na mabibless ka. So don't ever say that I'm too big a sinner or, or, or I am not worthy. Don't ever say that. Yes, you were worthy once, but because of Him, you were made worthy. You were, you, you were made worthy by the blood of the Lamb. You were made worthy when He opened His arms and welcomed you. You were made worthy when He stretched out His arms and died on the cross for you. You are worthy. Everybody say, I am worthy. Tell, tell, tell your friend beside you, you are worthy. Kahit tulog pa yan, sabihin mo, you are worthy. Let's do this. Can I, can I invite you to stand? Gawin natin to, para mas may energy. I learned this from my good friend, Tony Robbins. Joke. Hindi po kami friends. <laughs> friend ko siya, hindi niya ako kilala. Try this, try this, ha? Um, as in, babaan niyo yung kamay niyo. Look at me. Medyo... Stand on a slouch. Yung medyo para kang luaan, duguan, talunan, binasted ka ng, ng nililigawan mo, naiwan ka, yung parang ganon. And then, say it, I am worthy. Ano feeling? Convincing ba? Hindi. Ano? Oh, let's try this. I-back nyo yung shoulders nyo. Make it square. Chest in. Stomach out. Kung mas malaki yung stomach mo sa chest, okay lang yun. Naiintindihan namin yan. <laughs> Pilitin nyo na lang ng pantay sila. Then, look up. Pag na masyadong up, look up. <laughs> medyo pataas lang. And then you declare, I am worthy. One more. I am worthy. How does that feel? Mas nakaka-convince. So every morning, when you, when, you, when you wake up after your prayer, face the mirror, stand tall, stand proud, and say, I am worthy. I always say this, you have to stay awesome because you're an awesome child of God. So I am worthy. Do not focus on your badness. Focus on your goodness. Focus on His goodness. If you say yes to him, like, you, like the first Pope, see Peter, you'll be surprised at what God will do through you. So you just have to, every morning, stand up straight, shoulders square, stomach in, chest out, then declare, I am worthy. Then you keep your eyes on Jesus. Because something good will happen to you, and Brother Yo will tell it to you. Thank you so much. God bless. Okay. Na na Nahalala niyo yung gospel? It's about the proud and humility. Ha? Napakinggan niyo yun? Diba? The, the one who will be. The one who exalts himself will be humble, and the humble will be exalted. Pero lang ako naalala kasi homily kahapon. Gusto ko na ikwento sa inyo to. Before we, we go deeper, Naalala ko kasi sabi niya, meron daw babae na may polio. Bata pa, may polio siya. Tapos dahil sa sakit niya, nagalit siya kay Lord. So, she became proud. She, does, she doesn't want to listen to anyone. Wala nang love. Nakalimutan na niya si Lord. At she set apart herself to the church. Mali siya. Kaya lang, there was an invitation. They invited us to church, to sa parish nila. Tapos yun sa community, aba talagang minahal lang siya. They hug her. Tapos kinakamusta siya, araw-araw. Tapos nagbago siya. Tapos sunod-sunod na yung pag-aaten niya dun sa community na yun. Tapos nagkaroon ng project yung parish. At yung project is, may papagawa daw yung bubong nung nung parokya. 
kasi sira na at tumutulo. Tapos alam nyo ang ginawa ng bata? No? Tanungin nyo ako ano? Binigay niya lahat ng savings niya. Alam nyo kung magkano? Tanungin nyo kung magkano? 345,000 binigay niya. At tinanong siya, bakit mo binigay yung 345,000? Nag, pati family niya nagulat, 345,000? Inipod daw pala niya yun. Kasi gusto niyang bumili ng second hand na van na may lift para makasakay siya ng madali. Pero sabi niya, hindi, bibigay ko na lang kay Lord. Alam niyo, tuwan-tuwa yung community. At alam niyo kung anong ginawa ng community? Binilihan siya ng brand new na van. Pinalik. Grabe, di ba? So the proud will be exalted. Eh, the, 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 the one who exalt himself will be, will be exalted. Ano ba? Ano ba yung pinagsasabi ko? <laughs> the one who... Oh, yun. Sinabi ko na kanina. Okay, tuloy na tayo. Di ba? Let's close this this message by talking about Peter's other fall. Meron pang fall si Peter, hindi pa natatapos, hindi pa natatapos yung kayabangan niya, hindi pa natatapos yung kapalpakan niya. Pero just imagine this, ha? Ito yung kwento. The disciples were riding a boat. Naalala niyo yun? yun nakasakay sila sa bangka with the winds and the waves against it. When they see Jesus walking on water, ano nangyari? Makikita natin ito sa Matthew Chapter 14, verse 26, let's read together. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. At may sumagot ka agad, nagyabang na naman, ito na naman. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Siya lang ang malakas ng loob na nagsabi niyan. Ano sabi ni Jesus? Come, he said. Then Peter got down of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. Ibang klase. Brothers and sisters, nasabihin ko sa inyo to, ah. you listen well. If you're operating in fear, God's presence won't comfort you. It will disturb you. And fear has a way of preventing you from recognizing Him. But here's the beauty of it all. Ito yung sinabi niya. Ito na yung sumunod. But Jesus immediately said to them, ay, ito na pala yung sumunod. Take note, brothers and sisters. Teka mo na, bago ito. Huwag mo tatanggalin. Yan lang. Si Peter did about 99 0.99999% of human beings cannot do. Peter walked on water. Di ba? Peter walked on water. I believe with God, no? Pag tayo naniwala sa Diyos, we can do the impossible. Kaya din natin yung ginawa ni Peter. Kaya lang, ito nga eh. But when he saw, when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me! Di ba? Verse 30. Ito yung message na story. The message of the story is very powerful. Pero ito yung Jesus. We will always sink when we focus on the wind and the waves. And these are the different circumstances we are in today. Marami tayong storms sa ating buhay. And we will sink. Walang exempted dyan. Lahat tayo lulubog. But if you want to walk over whatever crazy situation you have, focus on the one who made the wind and the waves. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Brothers and sisters, lahat ng sinulat ni Pope Francis sa kanyang ex yun, yung papal letter Evangelii Gaudium lahat na sinulat niya dyan is patungkol kay Jesus wala siyang ibang ibig 
sabihin, kundi si Jesus lang, kay Jesus lang. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Lahat ng sinasabi niya ron. In fact, in the very first sentence, it goes like this. The joy of the gospel fills the hearts and lives of all who encounter Jesus. At sinundan niya pa ito. The heart of its message will always be the same. The God who revealed this immense love in the crucified and risen Christ. And He also defines the core of our faith. At sinabi pa niya, in this basic core, what shines forth is the beauty of the saving love of God made manifest in Jesus Christ who died and rose from the dead. Brothers and sisters, for Pope Francis, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Sa kanya lang. Now let's go back to the story. Can you imagine kung sino mga nakasakay doon sa barko, eh, doon sa bangka, yung mga takot sa hangin at alon. These are the disciples. Hindi lang naman si Peter. Lahat nung 11, nandun. Kasama ni Peter. And they represented the church. And when the gospel was written, there was severe and intense persecution. Lahat sila pinapatay. Lahat sila inahabol. Lahat sila tinutusig ng mga, mga Romano. Lahat ng mga Hudyo, pati Hudyo. Their loved ones were thrown in prison. Their families were torn apart. Their friends were dying for their faith. At ito, nagtanong na sila. They ask, Will we survive? Will the church survive? Will our faith survive? This is a powerful story. And Matthew was telling everyone, Yes, we will survive. Don't focus on the wind and waves. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Brothers and sisters, today, our church is facing different kinds of storms, scandals, schism, secularism. But this I believe. The church will survive because Jesus built this church on rock and we are still standing. Kinunta namin last week yan. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Diba? And we're still standing, brothers and sisters. And we will declare this. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Sa lahat ng mga tatanungin ko, kahit na hindi kayo yun, sabihin nyo sa katabi mo. Inside the core of your heart, sabihin mo, keep your eyes on Jesus. Lahat pong tanong na ito, ha? Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. Is there a storm around you? Shout. Hindi ako kumbinsado. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on, shout. Uulitin ko. Is there a storm around you? Is your religious leaders disappointed you? Is your president irritating you? Have your own family hurt you? Have your friends betrayed you? Has your body gotten sick? Are you suffering from financial lack? Has your boss forced you to resign? Is your business folding up right now? Has someone broken your heart? Has somebody left you? Brothers and sisters, this is how the story ends. Jesus said, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, si Peter, you of little faith. And he said, 
Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Para ganito yung ano eh, interpretation ng ibang tao. This is a powerful ending. Actually, yung iba ganito paniniwala. For example, yan si Peter. Yeah? Yung unan. Okay? Lumulubog. Immediately, Jesus reached out. Kasi sumigaw siya, Lord, save me! And Jesus immediately reached out His hand, pulled out Peter. Like a fireman carry. Di ba? Naglakad ulit sa tubig, pumunta sa boat, binalibag. Boom. You of little faith, why did you doubt? You iba yan. But this I believe. Gusto ko tao. Ready ka na ba? Oh, lumulubog. Sumigaw si Peter. Lord, save me! Ba't para pa? Lord! Ulitin mo. Lord, save me! And immediately, Jesus pulled Peter out and he carried him shoulder to shoulder looking at him until he went. They went to the boat and he was saved. He was rescued. Brothers and sisters, don't look at the problems around you. Look at Jesus beside you. You nan dapat natin gawin. He will not go before you. He will not even stand behind you. He will walk with you shoulder to shoulder until you're victorious in the end. Do you believe that, brothers and sisters? Sabay tulog. Brothers and sisters, as we continue this, I want you to bring home the message. Dahil sabi kanina, puro incomplete yung message eh. But this is a more complete message for all of us. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And all the things that we can say is thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the love. You just have to give back that love. Thank you for standing beside me. Thank you for giving me this life. Thank you for rescuing me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for reaching out your hands to me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We want to continue to worship you. We want to continue to praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.